Every now and then you can visit a place that just makes it feel like you've been thrust back in time. And that's exactly the case with this next incredible earth house that we're about to visit. I can't wait to show you this one. Good day, Graham. Hey, good day. How's it going, mate? Good. Welcome. Welcome to Underhill. What an absolutely spectacular place. It's been a project of love over probably 40 years. Started off as a little swamp with a just a little stream running through it. It's a lovely centerpiece for the, this entire Underhill Valley. Absolutely. Now I can see that cave house over there just beckoning us. Can we go have a look? Please do. All right, let's check it out. When I left England, I was about 17 years old and I spent three years traveling from England overland through Europe, North Africa, the Greek islands. I stayed in caves in Afghanistan and in Iran. During that period of time, I stayed with some wonderful people and it was my life's education, of course. I saw the opportunity to create something down here which would be very unique and very special. Um, and a lot of people talk about it and they think of it as an as a underground hobbit hole. Um, I must say that when I, when I first built the cave, Peter Jackson probably wasn't heard of in that field. <laughs> I mean, already I'm amazed at just how well it fits into the mountainside. Yeah, it just fits in as part of it and that, that's how it's designed, of course, um, to be part of the entire valley. And there's steps curving around there as well, that's so right, you yep. can actually go up and get walk up around and on the roof. Up on the top and of course, the top is covered in grass. Yep. And we have the sheep in here every now and again. Just, and just to keep to everything down. Keep it all moved. Yes, yep. that's right. Fair enough. Well, should we go inside? Oh my goodness. This is Underhill. This is unbelievable. This is absolutely gorgeous. I do believe that people spend far too much energy and effort in creating huge dwellings that take a lot of heating and take a lot of um, looking after and cleaning and, um, <laughs> and painful. Um, so to, to have something like, like this, I think it's right for the soul, it's right for the heart, it's certainly very economical. It's like you're walking back into something that's been built for hundreds of years, really. I was about to say, it's, it actually felt like I just took a step back in time. Right. This yep. is unbelievable. I mean, the first thing that I notice is this roof. The pattern up here is gorgeous. It's amazing, isn't it? How did you even do this? Well, the whole structure was built by digging a hole in the ground, open to the sky. Um, then we filled it up with sand. And on top of the sand, we put boulders from the um, Perongia mountain and smaller pebbles from the streams. And then we poured concrete over the top. And the concrete bonded the, the stones together. And then we dug out the sand, leaving the ceiling. That is so clever. Back in 1972, We'd be sitting here in this clay, muddy, cold area, and I'd say, one day, this is going to be an amazing place where you can come down and stay. And uh, they go, yeah, Dad. <laughs> yeah, Dad. <laughs> You'd never see it, of course. Did you actually have to put these beams in place first, then? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and then you filled it all up with sand, sand. and everything else on the top of That's that. That's right. Wow, what a great idea. And then dug the sand away. Yeah. And um, in, in this back part here, you can see... Um, we didn't use the stones, that's just the natural sand. Yeah, which also looks fantastic though, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It? Yeah, absolutely. And then this is a, just a that's skylight just a, up a, here? A simple skylight, yep. Yeah. yeah. And it adds a large amount of light to the back of the cave. It certainly does. Right behind you, of course, the most important part is the wine cellar. I completely agree. And this um, opens up like this and... Oh, wow. Look at that. And just how heavy everything is. I mean, Isn't this is a yeah, solid you know, chunk of wood, eh? Is, yeah. This is incredible. Again, everything made out of macrocarpa. Yeah. Um, uh, everything is oiled, um, which gives a beautiful smell. And of course, being recessed into the earth like this, I imagine the temperature in here is very stable, right? Absolutely. In, um, in wintertime and summertime, it's 17 degrees all the time. Fantastic. So you can come down here on the coldest of days and it's 17 degrees, and the hottest of days out there, it can be 28 or 30 degrees and it's 17 in here. 
So absolutely perfect for the perfect wine. Perfect for the wine. <laughs> perfect for people too. Yeah, very absolutely. true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Really healthy. Yeah. All right. And so kitchen so, over so here. So through into here. Um, a dresser again made with the big slabs of macrocarpa. Uh, these were made by a friend of mine that um, has a mobile blacksmith shop and travels around New Zealand. And I love the way that you've actually mixed all of the woodwork with the natural stone as well. It yeah. just makes it so rustic. Isn't it? It's and, beautiful. I mean, one of the things that I notice in this space is that everything feels real. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, it's, it's like it could be abused by Vikings and be absolutely, absolutely. fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot Very of attention cool. to detail. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we're actually by candlelight at the moment, aren't we? So yes. there's no electricity down here. None whatsoever, no. I didn't want to have electricity. I felt it was a place where we could get away from everything. Um, and I think that once you have electricity, um, you're probably not going to get away from everything. You're not going to get away from your phones. You're not going to get away from the computer. And um, candlelight produces such a, a lovely glow during the day and in the evening. Yeah, but we have running water. We do. We've got hot and cold running water. Um, and then we, go, we take that through the coal range. The coal range heats the water up in the old copper cylinder so that we've got hot and cold running water at the tap here. Brilliant, and what a feature that coal range is. Isn't it? Isn't it spectacular? Built around about 19, uh, 1880. Yep. Um, it's one of the few coal ranges that has got um, the option of having this open and um, opening this up and making it into an open fire. Right, and even a tap connected to and it. Even a so, tap connected to it. Yeah. So this this heats water within the coal yes, range as well, does yes. it? Yes. Wonderful. And then this is the oven, of course. Yeah. And we use this for cooking beautiful roasts of pork and lamb, and Far it's just out. absolutely amazing. So all the cooking traditionally is done on this. Gorgeous, and I love the way that you're you've got the wood storage there as yes. well. Yeah. So this is all um, like schist stone, or what is this? Yeah, this is schist stone, and this came. Um, we brought this up um, from the South Island. So we were able to use these for the, the two benches. Wonderful. And I mean, just the attention to detail with everything in here, the incredible floor rugs and, yep. the, and the, the floor as well. So actually, how did you do the floor? Because this looks quite special as well. Yeah, that was, that's interesting. That's got a little bit of schist, as you'll see in the center there. Yep. Um, and then around here, this was some um, aggregate, and we washed, we washed the um, concrete off the top of that. Right. And just colored this little piece, just a little bit on the, on the outside here. Right. So being recessed into a, into a hillside as well, how difficult was it to keep it watertight? Very important, of course, that's the most important thing. So um, we paid a lot of attention to that detail and we have, um, we have a drain running right around the outside so that any of the water that comes onto the roof will go into the drain and out into the, out into the pond. Right. And anything that comes down the inside of the wall between the clay and the wall that we see in the inside of the cave goes into a, another drain which runs the whole perimeter of the, um, of the cave. Brilliant. And so sleeping area over there? Sleeping area. Um, beautiful, um, beautiful bed. You'll see yeah. that it's... Um, it's a really unusual shape, isn't it? It is an unusual shape. It's um, a lot wider in the centre. Yeah. Narrow at the top and quite narrow at the bottom where your feet go. Sure. Um, but it's an inner sprung mattress and it has beautiful Egyptian sheets on and it's one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in. I bet. Oh, it just looks so incredible. <coughs> Every, everything is just so rustic, isn't it? I mean, even the detail of the window. I mean, this is spectacular. Yeah, that's a lovely little window. And if you look closely, it can give you a clue of where it came from. That is so cool. So it's an old car windscreen. It's an old car windscreen, yeah. <laughs> what an amazing space. And of course, the windows, we didn't stay with the traditional square windows. We followed the shape of the cave. And... All of the windows were put in with um, a copper flashing, so if there were any small amount of movement in the cave, it would take up in the copper yeah. and not shatter the window. So, I mean, rounded windows, rounded rooms. In, in fact, I actually think one of the things that stands out most to me about this is the fact that there are no square edges That's right. anywhere in here. Everything no. is an organic shape, and yes. it really actually just makes the whole space seem so much more serene for that, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it? Yeah. 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 There's, no hard, there's no hard corners or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful table, um, wonderful for sitting 10 to 12 people around for a big roast. Yep, I can imagine and a party. that. Absolutely. Beautiful. And then you've got the little romantic table there out on the jetty as well. Yes, yes, and, and, and lots of little places that you can sit around the pond. We've got a little petanque court over on the other side. Yeah. And so what about, um, what about toilet and shower? 
Well, let's have a look at the toilet and shower. We've built another cave. I was not expecting this. I mean, first thing I noticed, the bathtub. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, an old cast iron bathtub. That is right for gorgeous. One or two people. Yeah. Um, in the stars, out under the stars. Absolutely. Beautiful. Looks out over the pond. Beautiful setting. Yeah, I mean, every every which way you look is just gorgeous, yeah. isn't Again, it? Again, the and use of the stones. Yeah, it all just looks absolutely magical. So this is the toilet in here then? This is the toilet. Yeah. Right. It's a little eco toilet. Yep. And um, very simple toilet. Yep. Works with sawdust. From one bucket into the other bucket. The other bucket taken away, put into a, a compost. Um, and start again. Yep. And actually, I mean, for all of the commercial composting toilet systems that I've seen, I actually think it's really hard to beat the bucket system. I, I, so do I. It's bulletproof, yeah. there's no odour, it works That's right. fantastically, and you know, most importantly it takes what is most commonly perceived as a waste That's and right. turns it into a resource, That's right. eh? That's right. Do you actually use it here on the farm? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for fruit trees and that sort yep, of thing? Yep, yep, yep. For all the things up around the, the main part of the farm. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Now this is another little cave that we built, and you can see this beautiful big beam that we put through here. Oh yeah, this is hold everything up. Amazing. So this uh, macro copper again, or is this something else? No, that's a hardwood. This is a hardwood, right? That's a hardwood, yeah, an Australian hardwood. It came out of a bridge. Right. Come on in. This is um, this is our wet area. Another little cave. <laughs> wow. Similar sort of use of um, stone on yep. the ceiling. Um, a wonderful shower. Um, gallons and gallons of hot water yeah. from a um, from a Bosch gas hot water cylinder. Yeah. Candlelight and um, kerosene light. Lovely little stone basin. Yeah, this is beautiful. And as you can well. smell the oil in here. Another one of the big schist pieces that we've, um, that we've used down here. Yep. For the base of the shower. Wow, this is lovely. And I mean, you know. Huge space just Huge to shower space, yeah, yeah, well, it's just lovely. Mean, it's just wonderful. <laughs> and a nice little window, of course, to see out and... Yep, absolutely spectacular. And the llamas out there just to... That's right. Just to set the scene. Wow. And you've got the jetty over here as well. A nice little place to sit in the afternoon, have a glass of wine. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, yeah, and over the water a little bit. It was a dream. It was a dream. Um, and it was a dream that I wanted to share with the family. And... Um, a dream that's, that's really come through. It's lovely. It's lovely that my daughter now is able to um, run it as a as an exclusive and um, interesting B and B, um, and she gets to meet lots of lovely people, and um, sometimes I get to meet them too. <laughs> and so the big question is, I guess, what did this cost you to build? I have no idea. Bryce, I have no idea. <laughs> it's just a, a labour of love, so it didn't really matter. No, it was, it was a labour, it has been a labour of love. Um, and there haven't been any records kept on how much it cost over the years. It's something that we put some money into it when we've had the money available. Yep. And um, the, everything, nothing has been dictated by the amount of money that it would cost. Yep. Um, but on the other hand, as you can see from using natural, natural materials, none of the materials are particularly expensive. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not a lot, not too much money. Yeah. And not too little money. And I guess that, that, <laughs> is, that is one of the things with natural construction, isn't it? That, that really the biggest expense when you're building with natural materials is actually the labour, yeah, isn't it? that's right. And it's just the, the time that you're able to put into that's it right. to construct it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But never sacrifice anything. Um, you know, if, we, if we couldn't afford something, we'd just leave it a little bit longer until we could afford. We didn't put anything in that would replace it. Yep. If we used plastic, of course, <laughs> it would last forever. Um, but that but would be it wouldn't have absolutely the same ridiculous, you know, and we wouldn't have plastic down here and we wouldn't have anything down here that wasn't part of what should be here in the environment of what we've created. Well, in the 30 minutes that I've been here with you, I already feel like I'm 20 years younger and have been thrown <laughs> completely back in time. Uh, uh, that's awesome. What you have created here is magical. Thank you so much for sharing it with me, Graham. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Being able to visit a space like this is just such a treat for me. I mean, it actually feels like it was grown by nature and not built by man. There really is something about all of the materials that have gone into the construction of this house and the way that it was all put together that just makes it feel so wonderfully organic. 
You can really tell how much love and creativity went into building this place. To be honest, I actually feel really lucky just to be sitting here right now.